Good morning, and uh, Abe, thank you very much. And Richard, it's always nice to, to be with you. I never thought I'd ever say that. Uh, <laughs> uh, actually, the last um, uh, uh, one of the things that I was concerned about, Richard has so many friends here in the Capitol, that I was afraid that he would see the audience with a lot of his supporters, and that might present me with a disadvantage. So. I just received a message that there's an early retirement bill being negotiated right now. <laughs> <laughs> and it has to leave and be uh, okay with um, But it's really a pleasure to be here. And thank you for all of you for coming because uh, the issues that have been framed in Wisconsin are pertinent and important, not just for that state, uh, but for New York and many other states as well. This debate is not happening in a vacuum. We're all familiar with the economic crisis that is affecting uh, both uh, the nation and the states. In fact, uh, the CBO over the weekend just released um, new data which suggests that the national debt will reach 100% of GDP by the year 2020. Uh, should be alarming for all of us. All of the states, like New York, face massive liabilities. New York, uh, $200 billion of unfunded retiree health obligations at the state and local level. Um, the, the question of how you calculate the unfunded pension liabilities is one that's been subject to debate, uh, but certainly I think we can all agree that our financial future <coughs> is tenuous at best as it stands now. Uh, the New York's economic decline has not been of recent vintage, and I think all of us know if you travel around this state, if you go west of Albany and north of Saratoga, the state is an economic dead zone. It's not too, extend, too extreme to say that many of our upstate cities, in fact, are in an economic death spiral. But we know that we're going to lose uh, the two congressional seats in the next census uh, that, that will take place, the reapportionment that will take place for the 2012 election. Uh, we'll be down to 27, the lowest number of congressional seats since uh, the early 1800s for our state. It's no surprise that this cascading financial crisis has left states grappling with how to contain costs. Some, like Connecticut and Illinois, have gone back to the well, raising taxes, done some spending restraint. Others, like California, which is an entirely different uh, category by itself, are grappling with 25, 27 billion dollar deficits. And most other states, like New York and Wisconsin, are looking to address the cost drivers that are driving up costs throughout state and local government, and not merely rely upon tried and true and failed tax increases to balance budgets. The issue, issue of limiting or restricting collective bargaining privileges is not confined to Wisconsin. A number of other states have moved in this direction as well. Indiana, as you know, did this under Governor Daniels by executive order, which is quite fascinating to me. Uh, it was in it was placed there by executive order by Governor Bayh in 1998, and Governor Daniels reversed it in 2005. Virginia enacted these restrictions on collective bargaining in 1991, and of course, as you know, the federal government does not, by and large, have collective bargaining for its workforce. Here in New York, the New York Conference of Mayors, made up largely of Democratic elected officials, have embraced Wisconsin-like reforms the mayors, along with county executives and other elected officials, realize what Albany likes to ignore, that collective bargaining has gotten out of control in New York State, and it needs reform. Further, they realize that collective bargaining, as now practiced in New York, unduly tilts the negotiating table in favor of employee unions and against the interests of taxpayers. Like in Wisconsin, collective bargaining, as practiced in New York, needs reform. Failure to do so will mean that we will continue to make the state less competitive in the market for private sector jobs, and just as important, and I think this is the essential point for many of us, crowd out funding for essential public services like education, transportation, and aid for the disabled. Now, what are some of the essential ingredients of reform here in New York? First, health insurance. All state and local workers are in the employee retirement system or the teacher's retirement system or the local retirement systems, systems within the city of New York. These are not subject to collective bargaining by state law. We should, in my view, remove health insurance as an object or subject of collective bargaining as well. Massive savings could be accrued to these localities all throughout the state if everyone was in the NYSHIP program. 
State workers pay 10% of individual costs, 25% of family costs, over half of the school uh, employees in New York State, and many of the local employees in New York State pay nothing for health insurance. It's uh, any wonder why we have escalation in costs uh, for health insurance. Retiree health obligations are another unfunded uh, obligation in the state. Not a nickel is set aside for those unfunded retiree health obligations, as I note. And Abe, would you give me a high sign at five minutes? Um, you, didn't just, you didn't just give it to me, did you? No. The state has now enshrined teacher retirement benefits in state law almost as if they were not paying attention to these costs. <laughs> Many places, Buffalo included, I know this from having served on the control board in Buffalo, are paying more for retiree health insurance than they are for current employees. We all know the good news, we're all living longer. Life expectancy in the 20th century had the largest increase of any time in recorded history of mankind. And yet, <coughs> while we're living longer, that also has the counter side the, the costs for people in their 80s, 90s, and into 100 are, are extraordinary. And this is, this is something that we have to grapple with as a society. And the state has to address this in its uh, retirement systems as well. Uh, most local, many local employees are getting health insurance for free. Uh, Erie County sheriffs, for instance, it was recently ruled by an arbitrator that they would pay 15% of health costs. But that is the exception and not the rule. Uh, the advantage of scale in health insurance uh, would be extraordinary. The NYSHA plan uh, costs about $17,000 per family. Uh, and there are many school districts, for instance, one in Orange County I was recently familiar with, they pay $30,000 a year for family coverage. In Westchester, health insurance is free to all of the employees, not to the taxpayers. Benefits in Westchester now consume 55% of payroll. When GM went belly up, benefits were 37% of payroll. You do the math. Decide uh, uh, these issues on health insurance. This should be decided at the legislative level. It should be decided on a statewide basis and should be taken out of collective bargaining. Um, second, accrued sick leave on health insurance. It's now costing the state about $200 million a year to allow employees to bank sick time and then use that to defer the cost of retiree health insurance. It's done at the local level well as well. It cannot be afforded. It should be removed. Third, uh, a big reform that we need at the school level is the 3020A discipline process. One of the big disincentives is that in the discipline plot process, the union and the school don't pay anything. It's entirely paid by the state. You have extraordinarily uh, cumbersome and difficult and bureaucratic procedures if we made the union and the school district share the cost with the state, then, like they do with interest arbitration, it would move that process along greatly. Education Department has actually introduced a program bill in this area, and that should help. Uh, fourth, the biggest ripoff of all is, is, is layered on top of collective bargaining is the Triborough Law. You've heard about this. There's no motivation for employee organizations to uh, uh, come to terms, especially in a time of economic distress because sitting there will still guarantee them raises. We're going to pay a billion dollars of raises this year at the school district level. The governor yesterday noted uh, briefly in the TU this morning, 140 million of raises are paid at the state level uh, this year uh, for step increases. And my favorite of all time, the Buffalo teachers have cosmetic, elective cosmetic surgery in their contract. When you tell them we can't afford it, in 2004, it cost $2 million. We thought we'd embarrass them. They had so many tummy tucks, so many nose jobs, so many breast implants, so many liposuctions. $2 million in 2004, $9 million in 2009. They simply say, no, in order to give this up, you have to give us something. That kind of 50s era mentality, which is pervasive, is destroying Buffalo and destroying many of our upstate cities and localities. So, Ladies and gentlemen, um, lastly, I would say that the Taylor Law also needs, we need to uh, have, uh, re reflect the fact that management rights are being emasculated through the Taylor Law. Uh, many things in terms of uh, uh, economic terms, in terms of how you manage your local government, how you consolidate functions, how you consolidate uh, functions across governments, they're all subject to negotiation. It makes it impossible uh, to get anything really accomplished and done. In sum, the Taylor, need is in, in Taylor Law is in drastic need of modernization and reform, and this is not an object in itself. The object is to improve the private sector economy so that we grow jobs. 
New York and upstate New York is in an economic death spiral. If it weren't for Wall Street in the last 30 years, New York State would be the economic equivalent of West Virginia. And let's not kid ourselves. We are going nowhere fast as a state by continuing to layer on cost upon cost upon cost upon taxpayers, where property taxes are 70% above the national average. We simply cannot afford to continue the status quo. So what you see in Wisconsin, is a manifestation of the problem which they see there. What I see here in New York is, is that a government that has become too big, with processes that are too cumbersome, that with uh, costs that are unaffordable and unjustified. It simply makes no sense for us to avoid obvious places where we can save money, ensure uh, the needed public services we have, and I would much prefer to defer raises on a statewide basis this year when we're in economic distress, then lay off tens of thousands of teachers and necessary public workers. But the failure to reform these laws in Albany will leave local officials with very few choices. That is why New York's Taylor Law needs reform. That is why New York's Triborough Law needs to be repealed. And that's why we need to, top to bottom, make New York State more competitive and more cost effective for taxpayers because the bottom line is, in 30 years, we want to make New York a state where our kids and grandchildren can stay rather than flee. Thank you very much.